Hi friends, C-Note here, and uh, I am C-Note, my name is Christian Rivera, I am an INTP, and a lot of these videos and episodes are about helping INTPs realize some of their superpowers, their strengths, and to not fall victim to stereotypes of INTPs just being nerds or robots or people that can't be assertive and all of that stuff. And um, so I'm a digital producer, I do videos, audio, uh, photo, photography and graphic design and uh, podcast editing and all of that stuff. So um, I'm a little flustered because I already recorded this and <laughs> didn't capture any of the audio. So I figure I could just be honest about that and get that out there. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about the real superpower of INTPs. And that is that INTPs are more calibrators than correctors. And correctors in the sense that uh, a lot of the time, INTPs, we fall victim to the idea that TI is about fixing someone's world. It's about fixing someone's dissonance and just telling telling it like it is. And telling it like it is is actually more of an, in, an inferior function for us. It's more about extroverted feeling than it is about introverted thinking. Like correcting someone and just telling them, you need to, that's inferior FE more than it is about TI. We use TI, we use logic to try to correct someone. We use, we use logic in our brain, but then we see someone not following our same logic and we're like, ah, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're not fixing, you know? <laughs> so, um, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's why we get upset about that. But really our strength is about calibrating and calibrating someone on the scale of optimism and pessimism. And th that's really, I mean, in, in a lot more ways too, and a lot, but I'm going to focus on pessimism and optimism in this particular episode. So, a lot of the time, you know, INTPs, even some INTJs, and some other um, thinking types can kind of fall victim to thinking that emotions are stupid, and usually it's all in relation to emotional experiences. We see someone who is not acting or behaving in an objective, data focused way, and we think they're not being realistic. And by not being realistic, they are not being uh, uh, they're not being logically sound, and that is what is ultimately frustrating us, right? And and I don't think that is really a healthy perspective. It's it's a healthy perspective for us to notice that, but it's not a healthy perspective for us to force our logic onto someone and try to fix it in a way that we would be okay with. And that means just telling them like it is and telling it straight, and. One thing to notice and one thing to recognize is that we can't make a brain be ready for something. We can't tell a brain what to do. We just, the brain is not going to be ready to grow in a way that it's not currently ready to grow, right? So if, for example, if we start to try to tell an ENFP that they need to not be considering this emotional experience or like, there's the solution right there. You just need to fix this and you'll be fine. But they need to go through their process because they lead with a process called extroverted intuition and they need to explore. They need to try on different ideas, different paths, different solutions, because part of that exploration for them is how they learn all sorts of different things that they can apply to other parts of their life, right? So by telling them the direct route, or if they went the direct route, they would be robbing themselves of all sorts of understanding, of all sorts of things that they need to ascertain to really solidify this picture for them, the changes for them, and make a meaningful long-term type of change, right? It's not our job to correct someone. That's called codependence and we shouldn't be doing that, <laughs> right? So what you can actually do is lend someone your TI by asking questions, something I talked about in another video, to help someone calibrate in a more quote unquote realistic way. Now I'm gonna address that idea of realism real quick because a lot of the time, and it's important for you to assess this in yourself, whether or not you mean realism as actually pessimism. Now sometimes we disguise realism as cynicism or pessimism. And that is not a healthy perspective just because you have to like, you need to look at all the actual facts and the facts that you actually have access to happen to be negative facts. Then that does not equal realism. You need to consider the optimistic side of things as well. And in the other vein, if you're only looking at optimism, then you cannot just say that that answer is the answer. You have to look at the actual facts and the other side of it as well. Right? So where we're actually strength 
uh, uh, strong in is helping someone realize when they are being dissonant in one direction or another. In the way that I'm right now giving you information to help you assess for yourself, am I being too pessimistic? Am I disguising realism as cynicism, as pessimism, things like that, and not actually making growth for myself? Um, by ignoring the positives that are going on in my life or going on in other people's lives that are actually important for me to consider, right? So optimism and pessimism kind of live on the same plane and we kind of help people calibrate to the center or wherever their personal beacon is. I think it's not necessarily center. I think we can go a little bit more optimistic, but the idea here is like if someone's going too pessimistic and missing information, it's up for us to help them see what they're not seeing and the same thing for optimism if there's too much optimism in life in someone's perspective and they're not seeing they're just kind of ignoring all of the bad things going on and brushing it under the table and not handling things then we can ask questions we can give all sorts of general information we can try to help someone to see that there are some things going on you might get visceral reactions depending on the situation but um i think that is where our strength is it's just a matter of how we do it right if we're trying to correct someone and we say like look you're not looking at the information here this is what you need to do then that's not necessarily going to help we can ask questions again if someone is going to be going into a job interview for example and they're like i got this job no problem you can ask them something like what have you been doing to prepare for this are, are you good like you know is there something i could do to help you with that sort of thing as opposed to just saying like you're not gonna get the job like there's just no way that's you're not prepared you're not smart enough <laughs> like that's just not that's not a it's not it's not a nice way to put it come on guys <laughs> you can be a little nicer than that um i know we're intps but we're not stupid and you know sometimes by by just being direct uh you're taking the easy route and i think that is sometimes the challenge for an intp we feel like you know because we're it's easy for us to feel like the smart ones that our answers are the correct answer and that's another way to look at it too is that we sometimes could afford to assess capital T truth versus lowercase truth a little bit more in ourselves. And, you know, I'm, I'm, someone's going to say that I'm projecting because I am, I'm talking about myself when I'm giving in, in, in information and advice to you guys, because there have been situations in my life where I have uh, assigned truth to something that is my opinion. And it's very obvious for us. It's very easy for us. I should say to assign a objective tone to an opinion. There was a situation in the car with my partner, Molly, where we were listening to a song and I was having trouble trying to park in this parking structure and I was trying to figure out where to go. And this song was on that she picked that I was, I was just upset about. It was just not, a, I didn't feel like it was a very good song at all. It was just like one of those mumble rap songs and he was just like talking and it was like out of key. And I was just like, what is this? This is terrible. I was like, can we turn this off? <laughs> this is bad. And, um, you know, I, I, in that moment, you know, it was an emotional outburst, but I, I made an assessment on her emotional choices and that was not valid. That was not fair for me to do. Right. I acted as if my opinion on the song's quality was an objective opinion. People like the song. Like that's not for me to decide as to whether or not it is objectively good or bad. Like I can't determine like taste is subjective, right? We can determine the objectivity of the effectiveness of a song in scale and stuff like that. But as long as there are people that do like the song, then it's an opinion, right? So I, I needed to not act as if my opinion on the matter was the be all end all of everything, right? And, and that just didn't, that led to a conflict with us. And we talked about it, we worked through it, it was totally fine. But I think it's a pretty good example of when we're trying to use our truth as absolute truth. And it's not a healthy thing to do. It's it's not it's not good for us to do. So, um, you know, a lot of the times we try to project that onto people when it comes to trying to help them calibrate or try to try to correct them. And ultimately, the takeaway here is to not act as if we're trying to correct people, but to help them calibrate. That is where our strength is. That is where our superpower is. So, 
another way to look at it is that with the Enneagram, you've got Enneagram 7, Enneagram 4 that kind of live on these pessimism, optimism scales in a way. Fours are very self-defeating and sevens are very self-inflating. So sevens are going to be the types that are looking on the optimism side of the scale and living in a world of dissonance sometimes where they are saying that life is better than it is and they are living in the positive emotions to avoid the negative emotions and four is doing the opposite four is actually basking in the negative emotions so that they don't have to do the work of self-improving and self um, actualizing their positives and to grow from that right so they live on those separate scales it, it for us we're trying to kind of live in the middle of that you know many intps are actually enneagram five so if you think about it literally we're kind of in the middle but <laughs> um but but really trying to help someone who is living in positive dissonance or negative dissonance to try to realize the actualization of what's going on whether that's positive or negative you know logic is not assigned to negative emotions and it should not be if you're assigning pessimism to data to information then there's something else to be assessed there. And I think we need to take a little bit more time to look within ourselves to realize when we are applying our personal truth as an objective truth to other people and trying to make other people live within our own personal cult. You know, we're trying to make other people be like us when we don't want other people to be like, we don't want other people to make us try to be like them, right? So think about that. We are always trying to, or I have in my past, and, and sometimes I do this still, I'm trying to make the world around me conform to who I am. But we hate that the world tries to conform us to what it is, right? So we can't, we can't be hypocrites in that way. We can't do that. So at the end of the day, this is all about assessing that our personal superpower is about calibration and through calibration we can ask questions we can give information we could do all sorts of things that are trying to help someone understand the way that they understand how to grow for themselves but we can't just tell someone directly like this is what you need to do unless they're asking for it and um, if they're asking for it then you know have a good time you know but sometimes you need to be a little bit more delicate you need to kind of ask first like can i give you some objective data can i give you my direct uh, feedback on this. I'm going to be blunt with you. Is that cool? You know, something like that. You know, it doesn't mean you can't do that, but it's important to check in first and make sure that that's something you can do for them and help them calibrate. Because again, our superpower, and it's a very noble one, is to help someone to remove dissonance from their lives and to be able to move forward because that's just what we're good at. So that's it. Um, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for dealing with this setup because I was doing podcasting and this is just kind of an easy way to do this. Um, so if you're watching on YouTube or any or watching or listening anywhere, I would appreciate uh, like, share, subscribe, all the fun things. Um, you can follow me at Let's Go See Notes on all the social channels and um, follow my show Dopamine, dopamine.life, D-O-P-E as in yo, that's dope. And uh, I talk about mental health and uh mental health support for creative professionals on that show. And if you are an INTP that is looking to consider cosmic calibration, which is a course that I'm working on to help people, uh, to help INTPs realize their potential, realize their power and not just fall into the robotic emotionless stereotypes. Uh, you can consider that in the link below or above or, or above or wherever it is, uh, at bit.ly slash cosmic INTP, all lowercase. So I don't think this is as good as the first time that I recorded it, but I'm not doing it again. So uh, please let me know if you have any questions, any thoughts, any considerations, and I would love to continue this topic. Again, hit me up at Let's Go See Note and all the social channels, and I'll catch you guys next time on Dopamine or wherever it is that you're listening to this. All right. See you guys. Fade to black. Slowly. Bye. <laughs>